In this chapter, we're going to be talking about HTML and XHTML. And I want to clarify a few things for you before we get started. First of all, many people are familiar with HTML, which is the hypertext markup language, and it's been around since the very beginning of the web. But about midway through the web's development, a different path was taken. When XML emerged, it became very clear that the W3C was going to begin building all of its technologies pretty much out of XML. So HTML was reviewed in the light of XML, and it became an application of XML. So some things got changed, and it became XHTML. We have HTML and XHTML versions that are available for your use, so it doesn't really matter depending upon what you want to do, whether you're in HTML or XHTML. We are using XHTML documents that are well-structured. That is our personal preference and how we like to work. XHTML is far more rigorous. In other words, the rules are set in stone, where HTML has a lot of sloppiness in it. And so we really feel that XHTML is a nice, firm way to get all of the things we need cleaned up in the document, make it really, really tight and ready for style. I want to just tell you a little bit about some nomenclature, some words you're going to be hearing us say in case you're not familiar with what we're talking about. The first term is element. An HTML or XHTML element is typically a set of opening and closing tags that either surround content or replace the tag with something else. So for example, a replace tag might be, and I'm just going to put this in a random place, is the break tag. That is a tag and an element, actually, because it's known as a singleton. So this is actually replaced by a line break, whereas in this case, we have an element that contains information, content. So opening tag, closing tag, element. Okay? So I wanted that to be very clear. Another thing that you'll hear us talk about a great deal are attributes. In this case, the attributes are within the opening tag, and they contain an attribute name. And in this instance, the name of the attribute is the title attribute, and they contain the attribute value contained in quotes. And that value is going to be any number of things, whether it's a word or numeric value or a URL or something like that. The value is the way that the attribute is further explained. So here is the attribute, an attribute name, and an attribute value. Just a reminder, all files that we're working on that are XHTML files will be saved with the .html suffix. Dreamweaver by default will use htm. Other situations might ask you to use htm or html. But for our purposes, .html is the suffix we're using for our files, and we highly recommend that you do the same. We've also added a whole bunch of different resources which are available in the bookmarks.html file. Now, some of these bookmarks relate directly to the examples that we're going to be using, and some of them are backup information, additional resources where you can go and learn more about the topic that we're discussing in that particular movie. Yes, and you'll hear us referring to this file throughout just to remind you that, in fact, those resources are available because obviously we can't cover every nuance of such highly technical information. And we've made some decisions that involve taking some of that technical information out of the process so we can get, again, into the juicy design that we really want to do. So be sure to check that particular source files folder, as you can see here in the Dreamweaver workflow files panel there. The source files folder will contain all of these helpful files and resources for you. There are also source files for PNGs that you can edit, all kinds of stuff for graphics, and you know, really, really helpful materials for you to work with along with the exercises in each of these chapters. Right. Let's saddle up. <laughs> 